We was playing the Bluebird one night. It's the 30-Day Solo Podcast Challenge. This is day number 17. I'm David Hooper from BigPodcast.com. And my job is to help you grow a big audience for your message. The way we are doing that is via podcasting. This series of episodes is going to do three things for you. One, help clarify your message. That's the number one thing that you can do to attract and build a great audience. You're going to improve your delivery. You're going to sound so smooth when this is done. People will say, man, you sound like you should be on the radio. And you're going to say, I do, don't I? You're going to add flexibility to your podcasting too. You'll be able to release episodes when you want. You can change things up when you want, raise rates when you want, lower rates when you want, bring on a co-host, fire a co-host. Whatever you want, you can do it when you have solo podcasting as one of the tools in your podcast toolbox. If you have not already done this, listen to the intro episode first. This explains the what and the why of everything happening here. To get it, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. As the name would suggest, there are 30 episodes in the 30-day solo podcast challenge, but I've got an intro episode that comes before those episodes. At the end, you'll get a conclusion episode that wraps everything up in a nice bow, but I want you to have all of it because that is the way to make what we are working on today 10 times more powerful for you. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. That makes sure you get everything. Previously, we talked about the biggest surprise. What really surprised you about your podcasting work? For me, that was a personal story. You can go back to day number 16 if you have not heard that. Again, bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. That gets you all of these episodes. Day number 16 is included in that. Today, the focus is jargon. Here's the question for you. What terms, sayings, and words tend to confuse people? You need to be able to think like a listener. You are so close to the content that you've got on your podcast, you may not know what they understand and what they don't understand. And if you truly want a big podcast, you absolutely must understand where they are so you can get them where they want to be. That's why this is important, because not everybody listening to you knows what you do. Let me give you a couple of examples. First, let me give you an overall view of why this is important. As I've talked about here on the 30 Day Solo Podcast Challenge, I have a broadcast show, and the way that works is we have a flagship station. It happens to be in Nashville. We record in Nashville. People come to the flagship station in Nashville, but the show goes out everywhere. We have guests that think locally when they come to the station. They think this is a local radio station. This is only going to Nashville. That is not true. Like a podcast, this show goes everywhere. But because we're in Nashville, and because many of the guests are already in Nashville, many people talk about local Nashville things. And that somewhat makes sense. You can understand that if a show is in Nashville... You record at a broadcast radio station, also in Nashville, and you're from Nashville, you're going to think locally. And they do. Many guests talk about local Nashville places. But like your podcast, the listeners are everywhere. You are in the same situation. And if you're working in a niche or a very specific market, you have listeners who are very connected with that market. They know all the terms, they know all the jargon, they know all the people, and you have listeners who are not that connected with the market. Maybe they're new, maybe they're just browsing. They don't know the people you're talking about, they don't know the jargon, they don't know what you're talking about. So let's take it back to me when somebody mentions something local. I have to explain things a lot. Let me give you an example of how this works. The show, Music Business Radio, it is a music industry podcast, and I'll have a musician in there. And he'll say something like, well, me and the boys, man, we were playing the Bluebird one night and blah, 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 goes off on some kind of story. And he'll say it in passing, me and the boys, we was playing Bluebird one night and blah, 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 blah. What's the Bluebird? Well, Bluebird is very important in this story. Bluebird is a legendary songwriting venue. So if somebody comes in and they say, we was playing the Bluebird one night, I have to say, Bluebird a legendary songwriting venue in Nashville, Tennessee. All I'm doing is explaining to listeners who think it's an actual bird or a school bus that it is neither of those things. It is a venue located in Nashville, Tennessee, and it is very influential. So when the guy comes in and says, we are playing the Bluebird, I'm helping him set up that story by explaining what it is. Same thing with people. Do not assume that listeners know who you are or your guests 
are talking about. Let's say I'm talking to that same musician. Well, me and the boys, we got hooked up with Jerry J. He gave us a co-pub deal and blah, 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 blah. All right, a couple things right there, right? Who the hell is Jerry J? And I'd say, you mean Jerry Jones, president of Capitol Records? And the guy would say, yeah, man, right. And you mentioned co-pub deal, meaning you split the royalties. And then we talk about the split that he got. Here's another example of the podcast, and you may be familiar with this. I was doing a live event not too long ago, and somebody was talking about how she grew her podcast. She mentioned, well, we hit new and noteworthy, and then things just took off. New and noteworthy? What is that? You may not know what that is, even though you're in podcasting. And the reason you may or may not know what that is, is because you have to be familiar with Apple Podcasts. You have to be familiar with a system that was set up at one time called New and Noteworthy, where they would showcase brand new and noteworthy podcast. And there was a time when that would give you a huge boost. There was a time when it mattered. So I had to explain that. Okay, we're talking about Apple Podcast. We're talking about this certain time in podcasting history. And there was a time when this really worked. It sounds like it worked for you. It let me explain things. But by explaining things, it let me guide the interview so we could go deeper into why that worked. It wasn't just that passing statement. And that's what explaining jargon, people, places and other things that your listeners may not know allows you to do. You're not being insulting. You're not mansplaining. You're not being a jerk. You're guiding an interview or at least formulating your own solo show that's going to allow your listeners to get more out of it. I want you to get a pen and paper. I want you to do a quick brainstorm. Think about three to five things that you hear people talk about. It could be jargon, places, techniques, people, situations, slogans. Think about those things that you throw out with your buddies when you're on your podcast or that you say on your podcast and you make the assumption that people know what you're talking about. And let's just assume for a minute that people do not. Before you list those things, remember my three-step process for an episode, the intro, the meet, the off-ramp. I want you to warm people up with an intro, explain what I explained here. You know, there's a lot of jargon when it comes to this niche. There are a lot of things that you would assume people would know, but if you are new to this niche, maybe you haven't been exposed to them. I'm going to go over some common jargon. Here it is. Then you get to the meat, list those three to five things, explain what those things are, outro it, wrap it up in a nice bow. Say, if you've got any questions, maybe we've used terms that you're not familiar with, you need more clarification, feel free to reach out to me, wrap it up in a nice bow. There's your episode for the day. Again, three to five things. Don't overthink it. Keep the outline short, keep it tight, hit record, go for it, upload it. And if you want to send it to me, bigpodcast.com is the best way to do that. That is it for today. Right now, before you start outlining, hitting record and making that episode, I want you to do this. Go to bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. Subscribe to this podcast. That way you won't miss what's coming up. That way you can get my intro, the introduction episode for this entire series. That way you can get the most out of it. And make sure you don't miss anything. Bigpodcast.com slash subscribe. While you are there, I've got a free podcast toolkit for you. I've got episode templates, social media templates. I've got a guide for you to work with guests that's going to make working with guests so much easier. The prep, getting them ready to go, getting them to show up correctly, getting the great interview that you want out of them, and getting that episode out in a timely manner. You will get that guide. There's so much in this toolkit. You can get it as my gift to you, free of charge, as my thanks for being part of the 30-Day Solo Podcast Challenge. So go to bigpodcast.com slash subscribe, get the toolkit, subscribe to the 30-Day Solo Podcast Challenge, and I will see you on the next episode. Everybody's got these things, investing, for example, a dead cat bounce. Well, what does a dead cat bounce mean? Does it have anything to do with a cat? It does not.